development of a cluster computer is one of the major step in the popularization of high performance computing generally when we write, write a software serial stream of instructions to be computed it to be executed by the processor whereas in a parallel computer in a parallel program we divide this problem into several sub tasks which can be run parallelly which can be run simultaneously in a typical architecture of a cluster computer several computers are connected by a network switch so these computers are called these nodes are called slave nodes or computing nodes and the network is then connected to a master node a user connects the master node through an internet connection or through an external network and submit a job which has to be executed parallelly by the cluster computer to the master node the master node then sub divide the job into several task and distribute it across the slave nodes once the slave nodes finish the job the data the output will be collected by the master node and will be made available to the user one of such parallel computer made out of commodity grade personal computers at nasa in 1994 was named as bay of cluster the result was that a high performance parallel computer made out of inexpensive personal computer next let us see how can you build a parallel computer with just one node if your computer has got intel i3 processor you may have uh, four cores if you have intel i5 you may have four cores or six cores so it will act as six processors so you can parallelize your program you can divide the entire job into six sub tasks and get it done very fast you can reduce the time by 1/6 if your program is embracingly parallel so inter processor communication is much less for an embracingly parallel suppose you have a desktop computer with the six core processor only one process with the six cores in it so this can act as a six uh, processor computer for the parallel programming this can act as six computers separately we will make a one node computer one node parallel cluster with the six cores let us see how can we make it first thing when you have a computer is to have an operating system my preferred operating system is linux install linux preferably you would install ubuntu version of the linux now we need to have a programming environment to do parallel computing there are different ways we can do parallel programming parallel virtual machines openmp and mpi let us see how can you install mpi and do parallel programming suppose our desktop computer has been installed with ubuntu after installing ubuntu connect the computer to the internet open a terminal so in a terminal give the command like sudo apt install mpi ch and enter it will ask for the password so then it will install mpi ch mpi sometimes you may have to install the development library as so most probably you wouldn't require this library by giving um, the command sudo apt install mpih it will install all the required packages required libraries so now your computer is ready for doing parallel programming using mpi you would appreciate that your desktop computer with a processor having multiple cores in the in its processor you can convert that into a parallel computer a cluster computer with one node so you wouldn't require much configuration let us see a simple mpi program having installed mpi in this system let us run a mpi program 
apart from the standard input output library we have included mpi library also the main function has two arguments and we have included two integers size and rank introduce size for the total number of cores in the program and each core will be ranked the first core will be ranked as zero the second one the third as two etc like so for that we have included two integers size and the rank mpi init is the routine to initialize the npi environment so the, it is mpi underscore init and no argument is passed on to this mpi init then the next one is mpi communication size that is for to identify the number of cores available in this computer the number of processes available in this computer the next routine is mpi communication rank will assign rank to each core size for the total number of cores and rank is for uh, assigning rank for each core the first rank of the first core will be zero rank of the second core will be one rank of the third core will be two etc total how many cores are there that is represented by the variable size okay then we have a print command print hello world i am rank then it will print the rank of the core out of the total number of processes or cores available in the system then the mpa program was then the mpa program is finalized by the routine mpa finalize note that in this program we have only used one printf command since it is within the M mpa environment this command will be executed by each core each core simultaneously each core simultaneously because when it is executed by the first core it does not depend it does not depend upon the second core or any other core so let us see how to compile a program this is an mpa program in written in c similarly you can write mpa program in fortran even python you have mp library so you can even use in mpi but c and fortran is it's well developed let us see how to run this program before that we have to compile the program an mp world program or a, an mp program is compiled using the command mpi cc is the mpi cc so mpi cc mpi world okay so this is how we compile the program so we have compiled the program mpa cc the source code mpa world.c that will compile and the executor file be written as a.out otherwise you can even specify the name of the output a.out or whatever the name if you want to give you can give so you'll have an executable prog executable file like a.out we have to run this program how do we run this program mp run and how many process we have in my system i have six cores so i have included mp run minus np number of processors that is six then a dot out if you run it see the output is like this so we have used only one print command whereas we have got six print out printed outputs because each core will execute the same print of command and it will write the rank as well as the total number of processes available that this is the size and this one is the rank the another thing you have to note down these lines are written simultaneously if you run the same code again and again it may not be in this not in the same order so here when you have the second processor uh, wrote wrote first actually that depends upon the number of uh, programs already running so the, it depends upon the load of the co course if if it if one core has another job and all that may be a bit delayed actually so each time it may not come out in the same order so that shows these are all written simultaneously so this is a simple mpa program this is how you run it suppose we have to run this command in the background of background so that we can log out from the terminal so the command is no hub m then the command then the command and the symbol upper sign symbol and symbol so when you give this command it will run in the background 
so the program will be run in the background the output will be written in a file no hub dot out see this that will be returned on that if if your job if your program is very large program in the sense if the program takes a lot of time you need not run it on the terminal you can run it in the background like one you submit in the background then you can log out from the system the, the system the program will be running in the system even if you log out so this is how you run the program let us consider another example of adding 1 2 3 etc up to 60 we have to add the first 60 integers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc 60 so this we can subdivide into six different jobs like the first job can be like adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc up to 10 the second job can be 11 plus 12 plus etc up to 20 similarly the last job the last sub task can be adding 51 to 60 so once you have the sums then you can add these partial sums to get the sum of the sum of the main job uh, the sum of 1 2 3 plus and up to 60 right so how do we do that so let us write up mpa program to sum 1 to 60 so this is the program so the first uh, these lines are same as that of the previous case previous example so here we have added four integers i for loops and n is uh, n is equal to 60 that is we have to add from 1 to 60 so n is equal to 60 and this is the partial sum partial sum each processor will have partial sums in the first process sum is 1 to 10 in the second processor the sum is 11 to 20 and so on g sum is the sum of all the partial sum okay so we set this is equal to 0 before the loop so if you look at the loop so this loop will add all these values each i will be added to the sum so when the loop is uh, over the sum will be the partial sum how does it uh, do the partial sum how does it identify because it when this program is copied to the first processor a rank will be zero so this is this loop is from 0 into 10 plus 1 that is from 1 into 10 right so in the second processor the same loop will execute will add 11 to 20 because rank is equal to 1 in the second processor so 1 into 10 10 plus 1 11 into 20 okay in the third process rank is 2 so 2 into 10 plus 1 21 to 30 so on so each processor will do the same line but the sum is different the partial sum is different because of the it involves the uh, variable rank rank is different for different processors so once this is done each each partial sum will have different values in the first process it is 1 to 10 the sum of 1 to 10 and the second process it is the sum of 11 to 20 like that so here we have a collective communication routine it is a collective communication routine mpa reduce it will collect values from each processor to the processor named over here this is zero zero means all the partial sum from each processor will be collected to processor zero the first processor including that of the first processor so the sum will be collected to g sum from each processor the sum will be collected and uh, given to g sum here the one represent that we are only transferring one value from each process only one value so we are transferring only one value from each process here we wrote mpa end because each number is an integer each number we transfer from each process is an integer and this does this not only transfer the values but also submit them because mpa sum here says you have to add all the partial sums and the sum of the partial sums should be given to g sum so it will be the sum of all partial sums so it will collect this routine will collect a partial sum from each processor sum it up and it will be assigned to g sum from all processors in the mpa communication field zero means the target is zero it will be transferred to zero if we put two over here it will be in the third process all will be collected to the third processor okay so this will give the uh, global sum
when this routine is executed the g sum in the first process will be the sum of all partial sums whereas in the all other uh, processes g sum will remain to be zero because we, ha we haven't done anything with the g sums of all the g sum of all the other processes so once that is done we can print all these values because we not only print g sum we are also print all the other values just to see how these values are changed or after running this uh, loop so we write the rank g sum and the sum of each processor even if you have only one printf you know that it will print uh, the each processor will execute this printf so we'll have uh, six outputs from each processor and mpa finalize finalize routine will finalize the uh, mpa environment okay let us see the how you can compile it it is same as, as in the previous case you compile with the command mbacc mba sum dot c so it will compile and give an output when i execute our file a dot out so we can run that a dot out file in the execute our file so mpa run minus np6 that means we have to use six processes for this uh, for this program to execute okay we we are using six processes so then the printf command this is the output of the this command this program this is the output of this program so rank zero where we have collected all the partial sums to g sum and summed it over so this g sum is the sum of all partial sums so it in uh, rank one uh, that is in the first processor this gives the answer this is the sum of from 1 to 60 because this is the sum of all partial sums whereas the sum is the partial sum in the first processor so we haven't done anything else with that so sum is 1 to 10 that is 55 in the second processor the sum is the partial sum 11 to 20 the sum of 11 to 20 so that is 155 and g sum is zero because we haven't done anything with the g sum in the second processor right only in the first process we have collected all the uh, partial sums and summed it over okay that is why the g sum in the first process is the uh, sum of all partial sums everywhere else it will remain to be zero so far we have seen few mpa routines in the first version of mpi there were around 105 routines however a survey has shown that around six routines are enough to write most of the programs now being used. The MP routines can be classified into two categories, point-to-point -point communications, that is the routines for transferring data from one process to another processor. This communication only between two processors in the entire MPA world. The second category of MPA communications are collective communications. You send data from one processor to all the processors in the environment. Or you collect data from all the processors into one particular processor. Uh, something we have seen like MPA reduce. It will collect data from all the processors to one particular processor. The point-to-point -point communication can also be subdivided into blocking and non-blocking communications. In a blocking communication, if you ex if you run a routine, it will block till that the entire program will be blocked till that particular communication is, is over. In a non-blocking communication, even if it is not been completed, the other the rest of the program can be executed. The rest of the program can be run.